Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title, this is another industry chat video and it's one that I'm really, really excited about. Today's guest is Liam Henshaw and if you are in and around the football analytics community on Twitter, you've probably seen him on there sharing some of his data visualizations and cool data analytics projects that he does for mostly for the EFL teams and also for his favorite team, Nottingham Forest. In this chat, Liam goes over how he got into data analytics. He shared some words of wisdom for people looking to take a similar path. And he talks about some of the tools that he uses on a day-to-day -day basis. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you find this video useful, also like the video too. In previous videos, I have spoken about creating your own personal portfolio of work and sharing this online to find yourself some opportunities. And I think Liam is a great example of this. So without further ado, let's get straight into the conversation. Hello, Liam. Welcome to the channel, mate. How are you doing? Hi, all good. Thank you, mate. Yourself? Thanks. Thanks for having us on. No, no problem at all. I've been, I've been wanting to get someone on in terms of that's in the data space for, for a while. And obviously, I've seen a lot of your stuff online, on which we will come to on Twitter, on LinkedIn and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think there's a it's kind of a topic that I think a lot of people are interested in getting into that maybe don't really have a clue at this stage. Um, so, yeah, I really wanted to speak to someone that's kind of done it and kind of, you know, that produces their own work like like you like you really do. So um, just for those that have kind of tuning in, just do you want to give a, a bit of a quick overview of who you are, Liam? I've introduced you as almost, well, no, I don't want to do it dis disservice. So just introduce yourself as, as however you want in terms of, you know, what you're kind of doing at the moment and, and what your kind of passions are when it comes to data analysis and things. Yes. So, I mean, I'm sure your words will be a lot, <laughs> probably a lot kinder than my own about myself. I'm, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, don't have massive of experience in the industry, but uh, yeah, went to um, went to Leeds Beckett um, four, five, six years ago now, um, and studied a sports coaching degree, and from there uh, became really interested in the analysis side of of sports um, rather than the coaching. So, uh, have got uh, level two qualifications and have coached uh, many many football teams, but um, yeah, went down sort of analysis pathway throughout university. Yeah. From there, was able to get sort of a placement within uh, Leeds in their academy and then further going on to Bradford within their first team uh, for half a season. And then, yeah, essentially from there, um, that's, that's where it all began, really. That was more in terms of the performance analysis side and opened my eyes to sort of actually working in an elite football environment and sort of what that was like. And then from there, obviously, um, kind of left that to one side. I ended up getting a part-time job, which is the role that I'm still in and, and work for the same business now. Um, yeah. And then sort of thought realistically, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put that to one side and um, carry on a, a career outside of sport. But obviously with, with lockdown and during COVID, sort of having more free time, we was able to um, try and start not so much a brand, but, but more just um, an account where I post sort of analysis. It was largely originally focused on Forest, so the team I support. Mm. And then uh, from there, branching out into um, essentially anything EFL related and and sometimes even further afield. So I'll go on to Twitter, um, occasionally LinkedIn, post some data visuals that I've created. Yep. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely more of a hobby. Um, I've been very fortunate from there to have opportunities I've, I've, I've been in with with Forest, with, with um, the Rune 23s, with, with a few people there. Mm. Um, and then most recently had um, a part-time recruiting analyst and scouting position with um, with Wigan Athletic, which I decided to leave in, in December. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, that stemmed basically from my work online. But, yeah, so me, essentially, in a nutshell, is uh, a sports fan who has far too much time in his hands mm -hmm. and uh, posts data visuals that he finds interesting. I'm sure other people... Uh, do and, and don't but uh yeah that that's that's what i do basically no that's perfect you've summed it but you've summed it really well there and there's a lot of questions on the back of that liam so um you mentioned there you, you kind of started with a degree in coaching at, it was leeds beckett wasn't it that you went to yeah um, for your degree and would it safe to say that there was not really any introduction to data at that stage was, was that before you kind of got into it or would, yeah know? so there was uh, the time i started the degree in my final year there was a module called um, analysis and acquisition of skills so it really wasn't data heavy at all it was actually more about the uh, mechanics and the learning of acquisition of skills as opposed to 
uh, data analysis and, and stuff like that. So had a, a very brief um, few seminars on on data and using sort of more performance analysis software. Yeah. And then that that was it basically. But um, obviously, as we talked about off air beforehand, for those who are interested in courses like that, they did massively change. So obviously still speak with a lot of the people at, at Leeds Beckett and yeah, the, the course has, has been revamped and essentially there's there's whole pathways now for performance analysis just specifically, which that shows you how much the uh, the space has grown just in the last sort of five, six years alone. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then so from there, you've done a couple of, were they both internships that you had then? At that Yes, yeah, so they were, they, they came about through university, through my tutor having links with, with the club. So yeah, yeah. both internships, um, one at Leeds with the academy, working with the all age groups from under 16s down to under nines. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially going up to uh, the training ground and uh, recording recording the games and then going back and clipping them down into individual yeah. player clips or anything that the club wants to look for uh, specifically uh, in style of play wise. So that, at that stage, it was more of a video analysis experience that you were getting rather than actual the data and, and that's well yeah if i'm honest like for me i that i thought that was the only sort of route that, that there was at the time i mean the, the will have been obviously the traditional scouts um within clubs working with the head of recruitment but largely um at the time as far as i was aware anyway the, there wasn't a recruitment analyst or someone in the hybrid role of a analyst and coach or the hybrid role of a scout and analyst so uh, yeah I think there's, there's definitely been a lot more opportunities in those spaces um, mm. now than, than there ever has been so yeah I, I was completely oblivious to that and so was, was pursuing this performance analysis pathway and then from there had the opportunity to go over to, to, to Bradford and work with their first team when yeah. Stuart McCall was manager for half a season um, which was a, an interesting experience but but yeah, it was uh, largely just an internship, sort of going in uh, once a week and, and doing a few bits for them. Yeah, perfect. And then, so you mentioned briefly there, like, co- was, was COVID the catalyst for you starting to put things out, um, Liam, online? Or was it done before that, would you say? No, so sort of actually wants to create a, a Twitter account to get involved with the sort of football analysis community, but sort of had left it and sort of been following people um, throughout that time and sort of, like well you know it's interesting sort of if you can post it why why can't I go out there and start putting stuff out myself so yeah actually um sort of took inspiration from a few accounts who who are actually good, personally good friends with now and um and yeah sharing stuff on on, on the Twitter sphere for, for for that sort of stuff so yeah lockdown just uh one of them gives you a free more time where I can't go out to the pub or go out and watch the football or whatever. So uh, yeah, a lot more free time to, to uh, learn how to create things and sort of um, start from literally the bottom of not even knowing what uh, half the software was to um, messaging a lot of people online, asking for help, sort of how do you create these? What are you using? What data are you using? Um, to, to yeah, now being able to, to, to put out quite a lot of stuff each day really. Yeah, no, definitely. I, well, again, I've got more questions which we'll come on to later in terms of the the community on Twitter, which you briefly touched on there. And again, because I, I speak about this a lot in my in my other videos, in the fact of you know people, I think everybody should have their own portfolio of work, whether it is data analysis or if it's more video, like whatever it is that you're kind of passionate about and you know you find interesting, to have your own portfolio which you can share online, you can get inspiration from others, you can collaborate with others. It just helps massively. Um, and I think obviously you're a perfect example that it's kind of it's led to different opportunities for you. And it's, you know, you've, you've been able to uh, build your following up on, on Twitter, which is fantastic to see. Um, so after your you've got you've, you've done your degree, you've done your kind of little bits at uh, Bradford and Leeds. You mentioned earlier about the little position you had at Wigan. So was that a part time position and was that more than then on the scouting side of things? Yes, yeah, so I um, started that role at the beginning of this season, which is which has just ended for, for League One teams, um, mm-hmm. sort of through through various people, sort of put me in touch with 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 the people at Wigan, just to say, you know, sort of the, they they wanted someone who was a Midlands based um, mm-hmm. scout, but also wanted someone who could lead on a data side. So um, yeah, had, had, was was fortunate to accept and, and take that opportunity. It was as I say, it was. 
it was largely scouting. So myself was was the Midlands regional scout for, for the Wigan for the first team. Yeah. Um, and myself and, and one of the other colleagues, we would also sort of um, do some player ratings and analysis uh, for the head of recruitment and, uh, and and people higher up at Wigan. Yeah. Okay, cool. And but you know that you're not doing that role at the moment. No, no. So yeah, just just personal decision to to leave in December. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean, the good thing that that's come out of that is is that I've been able to sort of go away and with the free time that I wasn't doing that alongside a full time job and able to actually learn a lot more towards sort of the coding side and try and um, automate a lot of the work that I've been putting out over the last couple of years online so yeah uh, Wigan good experience said um, no matter what role it is you you have in football it's, it's you're always going to take experience from it you're going to take learnings whether that's sort of dealing and communicating with different people whether it's just your own scouting knowledge which I think the, the more games you, you get to the the better obviously your knowledge is going to be and um, so yeah it was a it was an interesting experience and uh, yeah one I'll take a, a lot from going forward as well yeah cool and then would you say your position at because you you currently sky doing a job at sky bet as well would you say that has any influence with what you do or because is that like a data position that you're in no so um so yeah but essentially i started off at, at sky bet for like university as i said there uh, as a part-time trader really and um yeah works works my way up within the team so i'm uh, a supervisor basically for the teams which trade all the live football games. So if you go on the in-play page on Skybet, whether it be like the Premier League or Championship yeah. or Cambodian Premier League, sort of <laughs> my, my team are, are trading the odds for yeah. those games. But uh, job is somewhat data related, um, yeah. but not in terms of sort of analysis. Um, we'll use, be using Excel and occasionally Tableau, a little bit of coding, but but, yeah. but really not a lot at all. So there's, there's not really a, a link there yeah okay cool so um and you mentioned like tableau there and we've got um different types of software which we will come to um you know shortly on in later on in the conversation so um i think what we'll kind of what i want to speak about next uh, Liam, really is the actual starting of the actual twitter page that you've got and, and you know you've got which i'm, I'm going to link below obviously i'll link your twitter below you've also got a blog on there which you did a post recently which that's kind of what triggered me to kind of contact you actually in terms of getting started in data analysis, which was really interesting. Um, so in terms of when you started that, were you, obviously you started it with no following. So it's kind of, it's for, for it to go to that, to kind of have, I think you, what you seven and a half thousand followers at the moment. And um, you get a lot of interaction on, on the visuals that you actually post. So what were your, were you kind of apprehensive at the start in terms of putting things out? Cause you mentioned you had people that, you potentially looked up to and you, you know, you enjoyed seeing their content and you probably thought, like you said, well, if they can do it, why can't I? But I think it's that first step that some people fail at and think, well, you know, I've, I've not got any followers who's going to actually interact with me and kind of things. And I think that puts a lot of people off and they do get a bit overwhelmed. So what would you kind of say to people? Yeah, in that? no, I, uh, I agree massively. I think, I think even still now, I don't think anyone's going to look at what I put out at the moment. <laughs> I just think that's, that's that's just the way it is but um yeah i mean in terms of in terms of getting started as i said was was looking at what other people were putting out and to be fair there, there's been some great people who have, have put out excellent work which have now gone into some really great roles with within the industry so i mean that that's great to see anyway but in terms of just just, just getting out and getting started it's it really just just taking a step and just going you know, okay, what, what is it that I have an interest in? What do I want to get out of it? Is it creating a portfolio? Like for me, if you're able to share the data that you, you've got, I mean, having a online portfolio in the form of a Twitter account for me is, is, is valuable. I mean, you might feel that no one's looking at it, but you never know who's going to like your work, who's going to share it. And I can almost guarantee that there'll be people who work in the industry who won't like or share or comment or follow you, but they will see your work and they will be able to get an impression of sort of the, the, the individual that you are. Like I'll always take the, um, the example that I said earlier about Forest, obviously the club I support, I like, was very fortunate like um, to, to, to go in and do a little bit of work there, but that just become off the back of me tweeting some visuals about the the, the under 23 players that were out alone like mm -hmm. i said I, i'd never 
a thing that I would have been able to get an opportunity like that or, or to get an opportunity like Wigan through the stuff that I was posting online. Um, as I said, getting started in it, and I had I had no idea where to start. Like I hadn't even heard of Tableau before I even started um, yeah. Twitter. So um, I think the first visuals that I ever posted, which I think I subsequently deleted, were just graphs on on, on Excel, which again are absolutely fine. Like for, for me, these horses for for courses, like yeah. whether you know how to create a, a bar chart in Excel or whether you know how to code the same thing in python or 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 r it's for me it's it's sort of not so much the process of, of of how you do it it's more about what analysis and what takings you're trying to create or or give to the the, the viewer basically um so yeah for, for me getting started it was posting the uh, awful visuals in in excel and then it said trying to reach out to people who were, were on social media there for for feedback, yeah. uh, not not by t- mass tagging them in in loads of work, which I was definitely guilty of at the time, but yeah. more trying to comment on the work that they was doing or if their DMs were open, dropping them a DM to to ask for some feedback on on it and sort of get their views about what what would make it better or sort of what are your thoughts about this. So that that for me was was the the steepest learning curve was trying to take views and opinions from other people who have already doing such things yeah. or industry experts or equally um, trying to go away and research. Okay. So right. They've said Tableau. What, what is Tableau? Mm. Googling what that is. And then not realizing that I didn't even know there was Tableau public or Tableau desktop at the time. So yeah. um, I, all these different things was such a steep learning curve for, for all the different various uh, programs you create visuals in. Um, for, for me, it's just there's a lot of great resources out now which point you in these directions, which is great. Um, so yeah, get out and find what's what's you want to do and sort of what's going to be the the best way to create what it is that, that you want to create with your your analysis. And I definitely say that the Tableau Public is is the is the best place to start, really. So is that where you from after Excel? Is that kind of the, the next? Stay step that you took to go to the Tableau Public is that what? Yes. Yeah, so uh, as I said, finding out that actually you, you don't have to pay for Tableau. I just thought there was desktop, and yeah. then didn't realise there's a public version. So, yeah, went online, downloaded Tableau, um, and then essentially was like, okay, what what's this? And in fairness, it is quite um, intuitive. It's it's yeah. generally pretty easy to use. Um, but go, going from there and trying to one have a play around myself and learn learn myself of what to create or how do I create what it is I want to see and to be honest with you all the time it was pretty much a scatter plot because that's the easiest thing to yeah. to create on Tableau so uh, would go away create a scatter plots look at how to customize them and then ultimately go away and look at tutorials um, so yeah. a lot of there's a lot of great um, a lot of great insight on YouTube uh, there's a lot of um, sort of article documents sort of tutorials as well and then equally sort of finding the people on twitter who are also making these and sort of going you know what, what is it that, that he just made oh that's that's sort of like a percentile bar chart okay let, let's try and go and create that um try to see if anyone's put any tutorials about on it and there's some great people online who i could list a uh, 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 names along as my arm of, of people yeah. who put out great work for it but there is a lot of resource out there now to be able to go away and see okay let's let's give this a go and it might be stuff that works out great it might be stuff that you get no likes or retweets on or one comment but equally it's one a learning process you're learning and two as I said like you honestly never know who's going to see your work when it's online no matter how many how many followers you've got building that portfolio is is a great starting point as i said you never know who's going to look and it also shows sort of your willingness to want to go out there in your own personal time create something and share it online as well yeah 100 percent agree that like i say i spoke about it so many times in other videos and and i think just having the you know the way you've described you were you know you weren't afraid to just message these people that you kind of you know you've seen their work before you look up to them and the fact that they in most cases are willing to you know point you to a different tip here or give you a bit of advice is is you know I think that's very important for people to look to get started and 
what you said there about, you know, if your work doesn't get loads of retweets and likes at the start, it doesn't matter. Like you 100% agree. You don't know who's looking at it. There will be someone that is employed at a club that will look at that and, and see it, but they might not retweet, but they've seen it. Um, and I think also it shows your development as a date. You know, the first things that you did might be these simple scatter graphs. And I say that I, I couldn't do it. So, you know, I've never used the, the software myself. But, you know, if you start off here and you, you, you can see the development of you producing this to the start, and then you, your work's getting better and better over time and you are collaborating with other people in the sector, then, you know, it's great to see. Because one, I think on, on your graphics team, you, you've got a little thing where you say where you've kind of taken inspiration from other people that are doing similar things, which is, again, that's great to see. And I think, you know, it's just like the whole community does seem like everyone would be willing to help in terms of, you know, if someone's getting started in data and data analytics and, you know, there's people out there that, just what you know everyone's passionate about it. they just want to share their ideas and learn from each other yeah massively i mean to be fair the a lot of the um a lot of the visuals create now through through code are or from using other people's tutorials or 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 occasionally sometimes their code as well like it's just a politeness thing like we ask what well, i say we like i'm the community i'm definitely not but sort of my my personal view is is that like if someone wants to go away and recreate something that i've created or i've taken inspiration from like or equally if i do it vice versa one just to say you know that's actually where i took the took the inspiration from because it directs people to yeah. the original sources work to actually give them a bit of credit but equally like it's only going to make you a better analyst or uh, uh, someone who's going to create data visuals because you, you're developing you're learning you take new ideas and sort of that's how you just naturally evolve evolve yourself and so it, it just makes you a better a better analyst yeah definitely so you you mentioned tableau and then there's the, the other ones that you hear are sort of python and r so can you explain to the layman you know what they what they are what the differences are um do you use both of them or do you prefer to use one or the other um, and just where they sit in in the kind of scope of creating these data visuals that you do. Yeah, so as I said before, I mean, um, you in terms of coding, you have Python, you have R, you have other languages as well, but sort of Python and R are typically the most used across sort of the, the, the Twitter community and, and in data analysis in, in general. Um, essentially, it's, it's, a, it's another language, put it in layman's terms. It's essentially um, software where you can create data visuals or uh, run data analysis through various different methods. But essentially how it works is there are online packages which do certain functions. So whether that be creating percentile ranks or whether that be a specific package of software to create a radar chart. Um, there's, there's there's really loads of functions and I, being brutally honest, I'm probably not the best person to to ask about. But in layman terms, it's 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 a coding language which you can use as an online software um, where you're able to um, perform either statistical analysis or create data visualizations. Mm -hmm. But there's so many other things to it. Like I, as I said, I really only sort of scratch the um, the surface of, of, of coding. I personally use Python. Yeah. Um, as I said, again, the, the way I've learned is through other people's tutorials online yeah. um, and asking a serious amount of help from other people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we started off sort of, again, through Twitter, Mackay John's tutorials. So I'll talk about his uh, tutorials in my um, recent blog post, but essentially he will, run through the basics of how to install the software to how to install the different packages and then actually step-by-step -step process of getting the data, cleaning the data, and then creating the data visualization ready for it to be, to be shared. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just eye opening. So for me, sort of tried to pick it up middle of last year and just found it too complicated. Didn't really have the time and just didn't really learn it properly. And then, as I said, since since having a bit more free time since leaving the role at Wigan, I've been very much able to to sit down and try and uh, and learn these packages. But what I would say is is that for, for anyone wanting to get into coding, I don't think that just jumping into a tutorial of how to do it is necessarily the best way. I think if you're going to learn coding language and you do want to learn it, I would recommend doing a course or starting looking at FC Python, for example, who are a 
a uh, an online account which will share uh, resources as to the the basics of okay how to run a line of code how do you do a sum of two plus two and then essentially we just build it up lesson by lesson so FC Python have got a lot of tutorials um, and there's, there is quite a lot uh, available online on YouTube, which I do talk about in, in that blog post as well. But for me, I think I probably didn't learn it the best way to start off with uh, by jumping into tutorial, but I would definitely recommend going away, trying to understand the basics behind it and then going into a tutorial of, of okay, what is it I want to do and try and learn step by step and if I'm being honest, a lot of it is completely trial and error. Um, there's a uh, loads of forums on, online as to right. I've got this error code. What does that mean? And yeah. essentially, from running errors and finding errors with the work I'm creating and searching what that means, that's how I've been able to. I wouldn't even get. To, I wouldn't even say I'm at a basic level. I'm very much still an amateur, but I've started to gain an understanding of, of, of why certain things are happening when I'm trying to create data visuals. Yeah. Um, as you said, there is also R, so I that there is literally no difference between the packages apart from very slight uh, nuances with um, code. Um, as I say, I, I don't use it, so I can't comment loads, but essentially it's the same thing. It's uh, There's a coding language which you're able to have different packages and create the data visualizations off the back of them. What I will say is if you're looking at which one to start in, uh, I picked Python because I thought it might actually be more relatable to my uh, day job and try and just sort of general wider wider skills for potentially other roles in the future. Um, again, not, that's not to say that's that's the best one to go for. A lot of the people in the Twitter community do use R, and there are a lot more packages to be able that have already got essentially tutorials and the code already there to create data visuals. So uh, if you're wanting to sort of pick it up, get up and go, I'd probably say R because there's a lot of packages available already. Yeah. Equally, there's really not much difference other than it's just a different language. Yeah, sure. And just for those who are watching, the, the blog post that you're referring to, I will link that below. So I've got that open now, Liam, actually. Um, and the, the recent post that you did was, you know, as we've said, kind of getting started in, in data analysis. So there's, you know, there's some great points in there. Um, around the you know the starting out the software to use to kind of start out the different languages the you know the portfolio you've mentioned connecting with others um, all of which are things that you know we've spoke about a lot on this channel before um, in terms of see so your background you mentioned you're a forest fan so football is obviously you're a football fan in in as anyway so the kind of it seems like you're doing this as you obviously enjoy doing it it's a bit of a hobby as well and with the coaching background I think that is you know, I think that really does help as well. I'm, I'm again, I'm not sure what, how how you feel about that, but I think you are seeing, and I think you mentioned this in the post actually, is as these jobs come up in in clubs, just kind of on the foot on the football club example, you know, you are seeing people going in them from not necessarily football, you know, like from a different background in terms of whether it is a more of a mathematics background or a, a totally data background. So. What's your opinion on that? I mean, it's tough. It's tough to say, but I think would you say you're more likely to get in with a football knowledge or just in general, just being solid on on the data skills? Yeah, I think it. I think it just depends on sort of the role and the club that you're going for. Obviously, we've we've, we've seen a lot of these um, head of data um, roles within big organisations. I'm talking sort of. Man City hiring people who have got sort of like Harvard and bloody Cambridge degrees yeah. just in data analysis or they've come from, I don't know, the banking sector with an yeah. analytics background. I think that that is, uh, can be a massive skill because you're drawing on expertise in, in other areas and you can probably, you can probably take the numbers and not be influenced by contextual things. Um, this is more. This is more just me sort of spitboy on top of my head. But if it's if it's a, a a data role, whether that is a data scientist, you know you you've got those core experiences from from other industries where you are just a data scientist. I I personally have the feel that 
sometimes if you've already got a background within an industry, you can always already have sort of preconceived ideas about players or the way things that, that, that could be done. And I think if you are coming from another field, you know, that's only going to give you a, another skill to your bow. You're going to be able to draw on different experiences, which is great. Yeah. But as you said, equally, I think it can be harder to get into clubs if you don't already have that sporting background and mainly a lot of experience. I mean, football um, employment typically is quite a closed shop anyway. Mm. Like you, you'll always see people who know people who will end up getting roles like already clubs this this week and the last couple of weeks hiring people which have already worked in their club before yeah. into more senior roles because they're already in the club perhaps rather than looking for people who are the best fit for for those roles as well um so for, i mean the, th- the beauty of it for me is is that there's there's no set way like there's no set way of how to get into a football role or a club like as long as you've got the experience of sort of what it is the club are looking for and if not the that said experience sort of the skills that they're looking for whether that be in a football context or in a external industry um then that that's great as i said for, for me and my experience i know that clubs for uh probably more so performance analysis roles but analysis roles in general they are wanting uh people with um, a coaching background or preferring people with coaching backgrounds you'll see it more on job adverts that they want people who have completed their level two or their UA for licenses uh, you know ultimately it's going to give you a better understanding of the te- the technical and tactical um, sides of the game and that's only going to make you then a better analyst and scout ultimately yes clubs want data analysts whether that be recruitment or performance or mm-hmm. recruitment and scouting roles but you need to understand the game and be able to apply context to the numbers and to the data. I think that's a lot more important from a recruitment analyst side because it's quite easy to, for me to go away, run a model and say that player is the best, but why is he the best? Sort of what, what makes him stand out? What is it that you're looking for, which makes him stand out so much? Is it the actual fact, like a big example is I've got um, a model for, um, full backs and wing backs in a League One. Um, Bene from Rotherham stands out by far and away above, above everyone else. But that's because I have a lot of focus on um, being able to carry the ball and have a output in terms of delivery and crossing. Well, Rotherham play the most crosses in the league, so the play style really suits obviously the model that yeah. I'm looking at. Yeah. And then equally, um, sort of, he's basically a winger playing at right wing back that starts deep and carries the ball, so he's got more opportunity to progress the ball through runs. So, without going into too much detail, it's adding context to those numbers, being able to not just look at the numbers, go and look at the game and understand, right, well, yes, he is very good, but the model actually sort of extrapolates what it is that he's good at because uh, that's basically all he does and the system plays into the play in that style of way. As I said, that's just one example, but there's, there's, for me, having an understanding of of the game is only going to make you a a better analyst, whether that be recruitment or performance. Yeah, definitely. 100% agree. And just going back to almost like your your portfolio again, Liam, one piece I did see on... um, on your website was the the recruitment piece that you did for Forest, um, you know, in terms of the the summer recruitment for was that for the start of this season was it? Uh, it was, yes, yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. So is that something that you, as again, as a Forest fan, you just did that off your own back, or is that when you were a part of Forest? No, no, no. So um, for what it's worth, club, clubs really don't like you sharing mm. any data online. Um, but no, that, that was off my own back with, again, with one of the people who I actually took inspiration from as getting started on yeah. online, um, Chris, who, who's also a, a specific Forest um, analysis account on Twitter. But yeah, we, we basically spent weeks of our own time going away and, um, and going through that process. So on there, we reviewed all of the players um, in the first team squad from a day's perspective. Yeah. make decisions on whether we would uh, re-sign them or whether it'd be part of plans for, for the following season. And then from there, went away and was using data to be try and highlight potential players that, that would be of interest to, to, to sign. I mean, the, the funny thing is, there's obviously six, seven games into the season, Forrest sat Chris Hewton. So basically that all went out the window anyway. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah that was just 
basically all our own time. I think there's quite a lot of people in the analytics community who who will go away and do sort of summer recruitment plans, whether it's just highlighting potential targets for, for their clubs or whether it's reviewing their their current squad. Um, I think it's it's interesting. I mean, I like reading them. I like understanding more about other people's squads. And as I said, it's it's a big body of work, which one is impressive if you're able to put the time and do it. Yeah. But also it draws people's attention to from people in the industry as well. I said off the back of that, there was... There was loads of loads of kind comments, but also sort of messages from people in the industry just saying, "No, we enjoyed that piece." Sort of, um, is that potentially some work that that you could do with us in the future, or or at least being able to refer back to it when you are talking for a potential opportunity, you can just slap that straight on the table and go, "Well, I've spent a month of my time going away and working on this, or however long." And saying, "Right, well." Here's a ready-made full document, like yeah. part of the portfolio all over again. But mm. the biggest thing for me is, is that if you don't have an interest in it or you don't want to invest your own personal time, like you don't have to, and that's yeah. absolutely fine. But if you're going to do it, make make sure you enjoy it. Like as I said, the beauty for me is, is that I'm a forest fan. I like looking at data anyway, mm. and I'm going to do it in my own personal time anyway. So why not continue to do it and and share it online? But yeah, if you if you don't enjoy it, like don't don't go away and spend like hours of your time learning how to create stuff or or sharing things online if it's not something you enjoy like ultimately if you're going to spend hours you you want to enjoy it yeah no definitely i think it's a good and i will link that down below because i was clicking through that before we jumped on and um, it's a really good piece and it's you know I've, I've kind of worked in before i did this i worked in the recruitment department at brighton obviously a long time ago 10 years ago but you know the, a lot of the things that you've done is you know that's kind of things we would look at it's really really interesting so i you know i kind of will say people should check that out so um in terms of actually kind of going from doing your own portfolio and kind of getting jobs because i have seen people actually well you probably know people more more so than me but i think people don't realize that it is possible to get jobs on the back of just doing a portfolio yourself like it does seem quite strange that you know, people don't actually realize how obviously it's not easy. It's very difficult to get into the industry, but you've got to think if if everyone has a degree in this, everyone has an experience working at a club, what are you going to do to stand out? And I think the portfolio does that. And I think there's been many people which will just have started like you've done in terms of a portfolio online. And they have then found themselves on the back of that working in a, in a whether it be full time or on a consultancy basis. And I think people need to realize that that is possible. Yeah, massively, massively. Like you said, it's standing out. Like ultimately, is you have hundreds or hundreds and thousands of people applying for these roles, and realistically, how many sort of analyst roles come up a season? Like probably mm. even to say one a club. I know some clubs have multiple, some clubs won't have any. But to say like one a club, that's ninety two. That's ninety two jobs in in England in yeah. one in one year. And that's if there was one in every club in every year. So it, it's competitive. It's making yourself stand out from the others. Like I said, it's, it's, it's drawing on your experiences. I think, one, it shows that you, you're committed and it's something you want to do because you, you've created that in your own time. But two, it shows your ideas off. Like I said, I've, I've had interviews at, or uh, meetings with clubs in the past where sort of shown shown the work I've done, like, right, like, you know, that's a that's, amazing sort of talk us through it and immediately you've got their attention and, yeah. and their interest so for me it's uh, as I said it, it's not in fact you don't want to do it like don't do it but it's it's a really it's a really powerful tool to be able to have it at your disposal straight away like probably every couple of weeks we'll we'll be in talks with uh, someone within a club or an agency that perhaps might want some freelance work doing on on a specific player and as soon as they drop you the message you just sort of go you know sort of what is it what is it that you want in sort of here's my portfolio how have a look through here what is it that you like sort of and it, immediately you then got the idea of sort of what what it is that, that they're wanting from you and immediately you're selling yourself straight away which I think is ultimately the the, the biggest thing is being able to sell yourself because no one else is going to do it for you and equally having it having it there to get out and and show and make yourself stand out from from the crowd yeah definitely i think what you said about 
you know, you, you have got to enjoy it to be able to, to do it. A lot of people I speak to, and this is not just analysts, this is like strength conditioning coaches and physiotherapists and all that that work in clubs. You know, you, you do find that they're just so passionate about what they actually do. It's, it is not just a job, it's also their hobby. Um, and, they, you know, they love doing it and that's why they, that's why they do it. But I think it, if you are an analyst now and if you are starting out, I would say, you know, you don't, the data analysis is one side of things. I don't think you have to go full out and say, right, I'm going to be an absolute expert at this. But I think just having the basics to get by would be a massive help. Do you know what I mean? So, and I mean, do you agree with that, Liam? Well, yeah. I mean, if I'm honest, like, like, like coding, for example, coding is a great skill to have. But how many, how many people within clubs have time to be able to go away and, and, and code? Like, I'm talking, obviously, not data scientists, but even recruitment analysts and performance performance analysts like you are generally so busy day to day having to to churn out stuff for for certain people with, within the club like it's um it's it's not necessarily a skill that you're going to use every day but having an understanding of how to do it or be able to do it for for certain scenarios is great as i said when i started this chatting to you earlier it's horses for courses like if you can do something in the same amount of time in Excel, that's going to have the same impact, yeah. but it's going to therefore be less work or take less time to do it. Like, why would you not do it? Like, yeah, data visualization is great, and don't get me wrong, I I, I love it, but equally, sort of, is is a manager going to be able to go away and read a ninety-page recruitment document on Nottingham Forest? No, because it doesn't have the time. Yeah, so. It's one about being impactful with what you produce, making sure it's clear and concise, but also getting value out of what it is you're producing for for the time you put into it. As I said, if you can create the same thing in Excel or Tableau yes. as you can in code and it takes the same amount of time and it has the same impact, why wouldn't you get it when it's going to be less work for yourself? So yeah. I, I being multi, uh, multi-skilled multi with different uh, softwares or languages or techniques, um, for me is 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 absolute key in in whatever role that you're working in because said you might only get some of the attention for two minutes and you need to be able to get your message across yeah. um so yeah that, that's the key there for me yeah definitely is i suppose it's very it can be very creative as well because if you're trying to get a certain message across and i suppose there's lots of different ways that you could present that in a visualization um so it kind of is quite cool that you know as an analyst, you do have that creative side where you can say, actually, I'm going to maybe experiment and present it this way instead, um, which is always cool because I think you have got to, you've always got to factor in the delivery to the coaches or, you know, the, the scouts and stuff. So, um, you know, it's really cool that you can do, you can do the same thing in many different ways and then it looks different. So um, just in, just going back to, you know, somebody that's maybe wanting to get started in it, Liam, in terms of, is there any resources or any like in terms of data where they can go and get things for free um, or is it all paid for these days? Like where, where can they go to get started? Even if it's just so some basic data. Yeah, no, no, there's, there's definitely uh, resources out there. So obviously it depends what, what data you're wanting, but the, the best place I would start for, for anyone wanting to, to, to get started would be FB ref. So on there, they have essentially stats from data um, on all players and teams across all top five leagues. So whether that be duels won, expected assists, um, fouls won, high turnovers, essentially it's all of the stats from data that's yeah. on the top five leagues and it's there online free to be able to download um, and use straight away. Yeah. Um, so if you're uh, wanting to, as I said, analyse the top five leagues, that, that's the best place to start. Um, obviously, I have a, a lot of questions that, that come to myself about getting data for Championship, PFL, or, or other countries or leagues abroad as well. So that's where it gets a little bit harder. So um, opt to have some free interactive season dashboards that keep track of player data and team data. So they have that for sort of 10 or 12 leagues. So that includes the EFL and some foreign leagues as well. Yeah. Um, you have who scored, who, again, it's not mass amount of data, but they've got different player data um, in terms of goal methods, chance creation. They have it at a team level as well about um, 
set piece goals, for example. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit more team based stuff on a website called Soccer Stats that looks at uh, more team based, sort of perhaps uh, running analysis, sort of game performance, points per game, things like that. And then essentially, they're the free resources. But for me, and I will plug it because I do think it's a good service, it is Y Scout. It is expensive, but I said that that's what I use for a lot of my data because it's essentially a one stop shop for hundreds of leagues uh, where you have player and team data. Um, it costs about £220 for the year. Uh, so, as I said, it is expensive, but um, for me, for, for the value that I get out of it, I'm on it every day and said it's, it's I, I, I live on it basically, and that's how I create a lot of my data visuals. But yeah, if you wanted to get started, I, I would just recommend going over to FB Ref because there's so much there to, to get started with if you weren't fussy about starting in a non top five league. Yeah, perfect. Uh, it's good that there is, you know, there is stuff out there for free. That so there's not really any barriers. You know, people can just literally start for free, as you said, download it and get straight into um, maybe watching resource uh, videos to kind of talk you through to to kind of start getting the actual data visuals done. So what uh, I would what I would say on that though as well is like find a niche. Like there's so many people who can go into FB Ref, download a load of data, create a bar chart or a radar chart about a player post it and sort of that's it you know that that's that's great like yeah. you know you've been able to go away and create that as i said it comes back to if you want to build an account or build a portfolio like make yourself stand out like you know who's is there someone going away and looking at all of these scottish players that are playing abroad in italy for example or yeah. is there a scout online that's looking at all of the under 21s uh, from Italy in the Syria, for example, I uh, equally have an interest in it, but make yeah. yourself stand out and find yourself a niche. Like, quite fortunate that there's not loads and loads of people who are doing stuff on on EFL more yeah. so because it's not it's not as big of a, a league and they um, the data is a little bit harder to get hold of. But yeah. Yeah, build uh, if you're going to do that, go through and find find your niche. Um, it's it's the best way of standing out. Don't just do what everyone else is doing. Yeah, good advice. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so uh, to be honest, when I'm going down the list of questions, Liam, but we're kind of the next one is actually advice for people to get started, which we've kind of gone over in a, in all the different other questions. So just to kind of recap that is, if let's just put it on an example of, so uh, let's just say I'm a second year student doing you know either a coaching degree or analysis module and, and things like that, but I am wanting to go and delve into the root of doing some visuals like you do and just getting my head around what data and analytics entails what would you say to me if I was in that position you, you mentioned would you say the R you've said is probably the most kind of one that you would maybe advise to start with I, I just get started in Tableau uh, per okay. first of all just purely because of how easy it is on there you can do a lot of similar things um, that you can do in coding it's a lot easier and yeah, there's so many great resources out there of people, of people creating stuff. As I said, it's not necessarily always the most advanced, but if you're getting the same output, it's a great place to start. It's free. Um, it's not going to take you as much learning in terms of the, the process of understanding it. So for me, if I'm starting out, I would always go to Tableau. Equally, Tableau is probably better for those who are looking at um, not just a data analysis, but also performance analysis. So you can go away on there, sort of plot, um, plot uh, pictures to be able to sort of see actions or touches, passes, examples like that. So you can do so much on Tableau. For me, that would be the absolute key place to uh, to start. But then equally, if it is that you have a, an interest in coding and you had the time to be able to learn it, by all means, would would recommend Python or R. But if you wanted to get in straight away and use some packages, I, I think R is probably a little bit more useful there. Yeah, definitely. And then, like I said, just kind of to reiterate, get in the get in the community. Don't be afraid to share things when you have no followers. You know, um, ask for advice. Maybe, like you said, comment on other people's work and kind of just show an interest and kind of be seen in the in the kind of um, in the sector really. Um, so in terms of if you mentioned some online tools, I mean, you, and you may not be able to answer this, Liam. Do you, are there any books that you've potentially read that you, or even even podcasts on data analytics that you would like to shout out if, if you've 
you know, read or listened to any anything that you think is useful? Yeah, so I mean, for me, as I said, I'm not, I don't really like reading, if I'm honest. So no. the books for me isn't isn't a massive one. Um, uh, is my biggest thing is studies back from university is like it you might not be doing something directly that helps you learn, you know, uh, how to create something in Python, for example. But if it's perhaps more of a scouting role or sort of what it is you're looking at. Just going away and reading things that you find interesting like i've got books on actual scouting which again for someone who's myself who's not got loads of experience it, it's interesting to hear other people's opinions yeah. so um there, there's none specifically that i would shout out i think there's a few great podcasts i think the the, the one for me that i really enjoy at the moment is is actually called a podcast about tactics i think okay oh okay. yeah so yeah, it's just called a podcast about tactics. Okay. It's on Patreon, so I think it, it's a pound per creation, but yeah. essentially um, it is uh, created by someone who works for Analytics SC, so John McKenzie. Mm -hmm. um, he on there gets guests on a, I think he released them once a month, uh, yeah. maybe, maybe uh, every two weeks, but... He gets guests from the industry, so I've just recently listened to one um, who's a, a data analyst for a Serie A club. Um, and again, it's listening to other people's experiences and trying to take uh, values from them, which I think is is incredibly um, is incredibly valuable. So, podcasts I recommend, uh, yeah, a podcast about tactics. Uh, the Training Ground Guru also quite often have uh, really good guests on some of their podcasts. Yeah, so they, they've had um, some some really good people from the industry on there. So, yeah, those two would be ones that I'd um, I'd probably recommend off off the bat. But but the, there are just so many out there. Like that, just get away, read resources, whether it's athletic articles. Like I, I love reading um, their football uh, analytics ones. So, yeah. so Tom Warble has recently left, but um, there's there's three or four people there um, which are just really good and insightful that uh, inspire me they have great data visualizations on there so again it's taking learning to other people and go right let's let's give that a go in my own context mm -hmm. but also sort of um having a having a look at how they've gone about things there the athletics football tactics podcast um is is also another great one um, the, the guys on there do a do a great job of talking through processes of how they've created rankings or ratings, and then actually applying that to to the football data and adding the context on as well. So, would highly recommend that as well. Perfect. I think yeah, what you've said in terms of just being open to listening to other people's perspective is very. It's a, you know it's a big thing. You can learn so much from other people, especially the example you gave in terms of you know, the, the guy from Serie A is totally different. It's a different country, different league, et cetera. You probably will be able to learn something from, you know, from people like that. So, um, no, that's perfect. I'll link some of them below as well. So, um, I mean, I'm just going through, we've gone through most of the questions, Liam. Is there anything that you want to add? Anything that we've not spoke about that you want to maybe? Uh, no, the one thing for me that I would like to draw on, which it might not be the best place to do so, but I'll I'll do it anyway, is, is like working in data, working football I would just like to reiterate is not the absolute be all end all like just remember like working football it can be great like it's your passion it's your hobby um but equally sort of understand like having a work-life balance mm. I think uh, having placements and doing a bit of stuff at, at Wigan and knowing people in the industry it can be a tough job at times you can work a lot of hours it can be quite demanding um so just be aware of that and that that's not me saying like don't go and work in football because it can be an absolute great place but just recognize that having don't just also go and accept your first opportunity if you if you get offered one make sure it's the right role for you yeah. um understanding that you know uh, having an impact for me is is the thing like be anyone can go and get a job or a scouting role or whatever in football if they work hard enough for it but if you want to have a real impact and um, still enjoy yourself, just make sure it's the right role for you because it can be uh, it can be hard at times. But uh, as I said, the, the other key takeaway for me is just building your portfolio, like the Twitter community. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't know half of what I know now if I 
didn't reach out to people and ask for help mm-hmm. um, and, and get opinions on the work that I've done. So yeah, I'm incredibly grateful for all the people sort of that I've, I've reached out to um, on online and yeah, would, would recommend them. And then finally get out to, to these events and, and, and courses that people put on some of them are expensive. So, you know, you might not be able to do some of them, but um, you've got the stats bomb conference, which is in September. So I'll be going to there. It's a great place to reach out to people who are in the industry. Mm. Um, and then also understanding sort of what people are working on in the industry, what are going to be the next big things to do with data. Um, so yeah, get into events and sign up for, for, for classes and courses online. Um, so the training ground guru have done some great ones they do a tableau masterclass, so i've done that one um, i've also done a, a python one that they ran which was uh, ran by i said the company fc python on on their behalf so get out there and uh, and and get these resources and and create create links with people that that's how you're going to develop as I said the the community is great just reach out with them and ask for help, ask for advice and um, yeah, link in with them because that's really how you're going to develop a lot, a lot quicker. Yeah, no, definitely. I think the, the point you made just at the start of that in terms of, you know, there it's, it can be hard work and it's not the be all and end all to be in football. I think that is, I think that goes back to the fact that I think you do have to really, really enjoy what you're doing as well. But it's just so happened because I'd, I'd done a video on both sides actually in terms of the positives and the negatives of working within football and basically I got all the answers from different analysts that I know um the negatives were as you mentioned you know work-life balance and time and all that but one of the big things that was a positive was having an impact um, and this the answers mainly came from more sort of video analysts and put that rather than the data side but still I think that's that's definitely prevalent in the fact that having an impact on an actual professional football club on a match day and whether that be in the transfer window to bring in a certain player that you've recommended or, or found, you know, that's, there is something about that, that that makes it. So what, what people love so much, I think. Yeah, um, I agree massively. Completely couldn't agree more. So I'm, just to kind of wrap up here, Liam, I've got something, I don't know if you've seen any of the other ones, but I've done it. I do a quick fire question. And I was going to do something totally different, but I think it might be interesting to get, your opinion from maybe you're looking at it from the data side but so all I do is I'm going to name some football players um, mainly past players um, but there is some current ones two players and you just got to pick who you would rather have in your let's say your Forest team so let's say Forest get up to the Premier League and they've got an unlimited budget um, which ones of these would you rather pick um, so quick fire so I don't you thinking about it too much I don't you whipping out your data and your stats and stuff just what you what you would prefer so uh, first one so we've got Patrick Vieira or Roy Keane just as a Forest fan, if I don't say Roy Keane, I'll get absolutely slated. So <laughs> I'll have to go Roy Keane. Very true. Um, Harland or Lewandowski? Lewandowski. Gerard or Lampard? <laughs> uh, Lampard. Henri or Drogba? Henri. Ronaldinho or Zidane? Ronaldinho. Kaka or Figo? Kaka. John Terry, Rio Ferdinand? Uh, Rio. Neymar or Mbappe? Mbappe. And then finally, Rooney or Harry Kane? Uh, Rooney. Okay, cool. I can't I can't remember the results of what other people said, so it'd be interesting to kind of look back and, and check them out. So, um, but no, that that's that's everything from me, um, Liam. I really appreciate your time. I mean, um, what I will do is I'll kind of skip bits out of this in terms of, I think the, the advice you've given for people that are looking to get into the industry is really great. So, We'll clip that out and obviously I'll link your blog below. I'll link your Twitter below. So if anyone does have any more questions, you can either leave them in the comments below here. You can reach out to Liam on, on Twitter. Um, on, obviously, you're also on LinkedIn as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, anything finally you want to add, Liam? No, that's it. Like I said, I think the, the key takeaway from me is is reach out to the people and, and make the most of, of the people in the community just because that that is really how you're going to learn and don't don't be afraid to, to get out there and post the visual even if you don't think it's necessarily the best yourself get the feedback and, and reach out to people definitely well liam thanks again for your time really appreciate it um and yeah leave any questions below if you do have any and we will get back to you um, as soon as we can